Hi, I'm Katie Most. I'm the production designer for The New Adventures of Peter and Wendy. Welcome to Behind the Pixie Dust. I'm hoping to show you guys a little bit more about what I do as a production designer, uh, and also teach you how to make some of the props and set dressing that we'll be using in season two. Production design always includes a little bit of magic, so Pixie Dust seemed like an appropriate thing for this show. Hope you enjoy it. My guest today is Graham Kurtz, who plays John Darling. Just one second, uh, we'll fix this. Good chair, Mr. Kurtz. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Rose. You're just so tall. Yeah. We're making a clipboard organizer, a to-do list. Um, the idea is that John Darling uh, loves organization, Wendy not so much. Uh, so we're gonna help, help her stay organized by making her this uh, to-do list prop. Oh yeah. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is a clipboard. Um, I got this one from Michael's. You can get them at dollar stores, pretty much anywhere. Um, I wanted this one though, because it's fancy. It has the, the fancy clip. Because I decided that it's more interesting to have this be a chalkboard to-do list. Oh, okay. Um, so we have chalkboard paint. Um, it's it's really cool stuff. You can use it on walls, you can use it on anything. I didn't know it was even an option. That's oh amazing. yeah, you, there's also uh, dry erase paint, which oh. is even cooler, but um, this is sort of, artsy and friends, friendly and crafty and I don't know. It's Mind blown. Then paint color of your choice. Uh, I chose a color sort of like Wendy's room. Cause I feel yeah. like that's that's a nice little touch of home. For the chalkboard paint, you wanna have um, nice sponge brushes. Uh, Cause they give you the smoothest finish. Paintbrush, a screwdriver to take the hardware off of the clipboard. Painter's tape to give you crisp, clear lines. This handy dandy little things to do uh, rub-on transfer that I got on clearance at Target. Yeah. It was normally $3, I got it for 98 cents. Very proud of this. She's a bargain hunter. Yeah, that's actually one of the most important skills that I have as a production designer, <laughs> is knowing where to get the cheapest stuff. So that's part of this. Uh, so to get started, um, I think we're gonna go with uh, taking the hardware off of the clipboard. Um, if you wanna just grab the, the screws. Um, you can. Some of the clipboards that they have at like the dollar store um, actually have the little small clips, and then you don't actually have to take the hardware off at all. I'm pretty sure you can't take the hardware off. This leaves you a more clean surface to actually paint on. Um, I think it's slightly better. So then you just get the nice little plain clean board. Uh, make sure to take your stickers off. Just do a little bit of sanding if there's any adhesive left. Basically, we're gonna start by painting with the, um, the Robin's Egg Blue. Give you a little bit on the blade. Um, so you're going to want to get started uh, painting around the edges. You can paint pretty much any part of this. Um, we're going to be covering the middle with the with the chalkboard paint. Okay. So you don't have to be you don't have to be super careful in this section. You just want to paint this top section and the edges all the way around. We're painting on top of a cutting mat, so you know you can be a little bit messier. <laughs> um, it, it, it's better that way. Newspaper or whatever you want um, to protect your table. You'll paint the the front and do the edges. Um, make sure to paint the actual edges. If you want, you can do that in a contrasting color or use a paint pen to add a little bit of splash to the edges. You'll paint the back all the same. Or again, if you want to get crazy and put some sort of really cool paper or something on the back. That's also cool as well. There, there's really no wrong choice here. I actually like the kind of rustic look. Yeah. I think that's more fun. Um, yeah. I can do rustic. Yeah. So can I. That's a lot of these things. It's like, well, I can do it perfect, but I get impatient. I want the thing to be done. I want to have it. So that's great. Uh, it's dry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's magic and dried and painted on both sides. The next step is to uh, go with the chalkboard paint. This is really awesome stuff. Um, you can paint it on an entire wall. Oh wow. And just have like a wall in your kitchen or wherever uh, be chalkboard. Make sure to shake it really well. Okay. Um, definitely important because the first time I was working with it, I did a coat that was sort of mealy and not, it, it was not writable. It was not going to be good. Um, so just make sure to shake it. Aha. Flathead. Yeah, flathead, screwdriver, a paint key, whichever. A sponge brush is best for this. It, it gives you the smoothest coat. Um, you can also use just a traditional, um, just a traditional paintbrush. It, it leaves it a little grainy looking, which can be really cool, but it's a little harder to write on. Before we get started, actually, the John Darling method. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> would definitely be to tape off the edges of this. And when I did mine, I drew an outline and then painted in by hand with a smaller brush. That's also an option. It, it, it's not as neat, and so you can just line it up along the edge of your clipboard, and that gives you a nice straight line. You can just line it up 
right on the edge. Anyone who knows me knows that I hate having to paint off or tear off the strips to, to tape off for painting. I, it's my least favorite part. So, so this is this, this is definitely a nod to, to John here. Like I am not a neat line oh, person. See. You know, when you have to do it for an entire room, I it's, it's it's much more it's much more intensive. This is this is a, a level I can all I right. can do. All right. So now that we have it all taped off, you can uh, start painting with the chalkboard paint. One, two, three. Go. Oh, it's so cathartic. It's really pretty. And you have to do, I, I ended up doing, I think, two or three coats. Yeah, yeah you, you gauge it um, in terms of coverage. You, you want a nice, thick, even layer. Basically, my method for doing coverage, get all of it covered entirely, and then I would do, right before I let it dry for a bit, uh, strokes all one direction. Oh, uh, logic. Um, it's not necessary. I think you could also probably get away with leaving it a little bit, a little bit rustic. Um, but it definitely adds a little bit to have everything, at least theoretically, in the same direction. I'm using the, 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 the term rustic as an excuse for everything in my life now. Oh, yeah. I like it rustic. <laughs> All right, uh, the next thing, it's super exciting, you let it dry. Um, after the two or three coats, um, I think between coats, I let about 20 minutes go by. We uh, have already put the hardware back on this. This one's dry. This is the one I did at home that's a little rustic. You can tell the corners aren't exactly straight. When you do put the hardware back on, just be careful. It's spring-loaded, so it can snap back at you. The final step for this to-do list board, since, I mean, you could use it this way. If you don't want to add anything, if you can't find a decal, yeah, it's no big deal. Functional. It's totally functional. You can take a chalk pen and write things to do yourself. You can decorate it in whatever way you want. Um, you could even take just plain white paint and decorate it. But, because of my lovely decal, uh, all you need to do is peel it away from the backing, and then you just line it up where you want it. And you take a popsicle stick, and you just rub the whole design. Um, there's not a real science to this. I've done a lot of these because I used to do scrapbooking journaling stuff. Uh, okay. um, just make sure to go over every part of the design. You don't want to leave any behind. This is the dramatic finish. Let's see if I did this correctly. I don't know. No. No. <laughs> that one little bit doesn't want to stay. <sighs> see you guys. <laughs> Things to ooh. Things to ooh. That would be less exciting. That looks promising. Basically, being careful with this is your best friend. All right. Oh, it looks so cool. And what's really cool about this is it actually looks like it's written in chalk. So Graham, I have some chalk for you. If you'd like to write a message on our, our exciting things to do list. Oh, uh, lefties. <laughs> I feel like this is a good to do list for, for anyone. Very good. Vitamin C. Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, look for this on season two of New Adventures of Peter and Wendy. Uh, and thank you, Graham. This was so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. Your painting skills are amazing. <laughs>used my really basic Ikea screwdriver. It's part of a toolkit that Ikea sells for $10 or less. It's it's not fa they're not fancy tools. They're not the best tools you'll buy, but if you're someone who is trying to craft on a budget or construct things on a budget, you, you honestly get everything you might need in here. For example, uh, it comes with a hammer, which obviously everyone needs, but it also comes with this little rubber tip, which you put on the hammer and if you want to close a paint, uh, paint can, you can use just a regular hammer or something, but a mallet is actually best. And this is, serves as a mallet. Now it won't spill all over your house.